I've been asked multiple times to showcase the settings that I use when I play Apex Legends, and I thought it was time to finally make a video on it. Today we're going to cover settings, sensitivity, and even some strategies for maximizing FPS, performance, and more. Let's get right into it. First off, I want to cover some things you can and should do before launching the game on Steam. If you right click on Apex Legends and go to Properties, you can add some advanced launch options that improve quality of life while playing. Uh, for example, you can add minus and the word dev to remove that loud starting screen you get on launch, and you also can add a separate frame rate counter. It should be noted that Apex has a built-in performance display that showcases frame rate, ping, packet loss, and more, but if that's not what you're looking for, you can use plus CL underscore show FPS space four to give you an in-depth look at frame rate while you're in game. You can also cap your frame rate here, which is something I recommend doing, especially in Apex Legends. Due to how Apex Legends is designed, there are some moments where there's not a lot to render, consider being decided like a building, and some moments where you'll have to turn around and suddenly have to render way more, maybe like a field in Olympus. Leaving your frame rate uncapped or unlimited causes your PC to always try to give you the maximum frame rate possible, which can lead to serious drops in FPS when you're in hectic moments, especially end game fights and moments with lots of abilities and gunshots going around. For this reason, I recommend limiting your FPS to your monitor's refresh rate or slightly above. For me, I do around 144 FPS for my 144Hz refresh rate monitor. You can do this in the launch options with plus FPS underscore max and then the frame rate you want to limit, or for NVIDIA users, you can use NVIDIA control panel to change max FPS. Another tip for my NVIDIA users, I would highly recommend using G-Sync if you have a monitor that is compatible, as this will give your game that buttery smooth feeling without the input lag that V-Sync provides. You can also make use of NVIDIA's recently released low latency mode, which will further reduce the amount of input lag you get, giving you another slight competitive advantage over your opponents. Something I'm not going to cover here is what's called an auto-exec, which is a document that has commands in it to improve FPS and performance. As most of these commands have been disabled by the developers, I won't cover that in this video, but if you want me to do some more research and make an in-depth guide for that, let me know in the comment section below. Moving into the game, on the title screen you can pick a server to load into. I recommend leaving this on auto, however, picking the server with the lowest ping and packet loss relative to you is always the best move. Once you're here, press escape or the start button if you're on controller. You can press the settings button to bring up everything that's going to affect you in-game. Starting with interact prompt style, I have this on compact which reduces the amount of visual clutter when I'm trying to loot quickly in game. I'll show the difference between the two on screen. This one is kind of personal preference, however I would recommend giving it a shot simply because there are some situations where it would come in handy, such as when you're trying to aim at someone and there's loot nearby. Button hints are off, again this one is preference, cleans up your HUD a little bit and not really necessary to have on if you know what buttons are what on your controller or keyboard. Here's where we're going to get into some interesting ones. Crosshair damage feedback dictates whether you will see the X on screen when you're hitting someone. You can change this setting along with damage numbers to affect what you see visually when you're shooting at someone. I've tried a few different combinations with hit markers, without hit markers, with and without damage numbers, and I believe the damage numbers are important to have due to the high time to kill and the way armor works in this game. However, I personally think you should consider experimenting with crosshair damage feedback next time you play. Having this off makes it a lot easier to focus on your tracking your target and not focusing on your crosshair, which is what you should be doing anyway. Also, there's really no need for the visual indicator as your damage numbers and audio cues will accomplish the same goals. Again, test this out for yourself and let me know what you think. Ping opacity and kill feed, personal preference, pick whatever you want there. Minimap rotation I believe is better to have off so you have a better reference of where you and everyone else is in relation to your surroundings. Weapon auto cycle I would personally keep off, you should be consciously aware of when your gun is empty and have full control over when you decide to switch weapons, you don't need something else confusing that process. Now auto sprint is something I've seen both on and off by a lot of players with different reasoning, most controller players I know play with it on and only a few keyboard players. If you choose to play with it on, keep in mind that that's one extra key you have to press in order to stop and hip fire, and also consider that you won't have the ability to control the speed at which you move forward without crouching. When I used auto sprint, I found myself in too many gunfights without my gun pulled up and that extra second can decide your fate. Again, test them out, but my recommendation is off for more control. I don't really see a point in double tap sprint. You don't even have to hold sprint, so why make yourself have to do more to accomplish less? Damage feedback is personal preference. Now, taking damage closes 
the death box menu. I would highly recommend turning this off. I don't know how many times I got shot right in the middle of an armor swap and died because of it before they introduced this. If you're dying trying to loot boxes and you have this setting off, then you need to consider increasing your menu cursor speed if you're on controller or just become more efficient and familiar with armor swapping and where things are laid out in the death boxes. Again, you always want the most control over what happens in game. The rest of these are personal preference whether you want streamer mode or anonymous mode on. However, I would recommend performance display as you can be aware when you're lagging or dropping frames. You can actually use these numbers to diagnose problems either with your network connection or possibly your hardware. All the accessibility settings here are personal preference. I like to run Tri Tenopia because it changes the red dots on the sides to a yellow dot, which I believe is a little bit easier to see, and it also makes colors in general a bit brighter. I play with this setting every now and again, changing it. You know, I play normal sometimes. Mostly, I just leave it alone. But you'll see any variation of this from a lot of the pros and content creators that play Apex. If you don't care, leave it off, but it never hurts to test if you just want to try something different. Now to the fun part, sensitivity. I've answered numerous comments about this, but currently I run 2.4 in-game sense with a 1.0 ADS multiplier on 400 DPI. Now this is on the low end of sensitivity, and I should note that I've ran higher sensitivities, you know, 3.0, 3.5, etc. Find a sensitivity that's most comfortable for your setup, like the size of your mouse pad, and make sure you're able to control it. If you're newer, consider a lower sense, and if you're coming in with some good mouse control or from another game, there are websites you can convert sensitivities for, or just find something that feels good to you. Lyric sense isn't going to make you the next lyric, so don't do too much overthinking on this one. Right now I don't use a separate ADS mount sensitivity. I wouldn't go too far to the extreme with these if you are going to try them. You don't want an ADS sensitivity of 0.2 and then die going from ADS to hip fire because someone ran up in your face. And then as far as per optic ADS sensitivities go, again, this is personal preference. I've played around with these before, but I currently don't run them. Mouse acceleration off. I cannot stress this enough. Also, go into your Windows settings and make sure that your mouse acceleration is off there as well. You can do this by pulling up your mouse settings and going to additional mouse options and then unchecking a box that says enhance pointer precision. Make sure this is off. There is a mouse excel program that's designed with customizable settings and curves, but this is one of those things that you experiment with at a high level of control and skill. For now, keep it off across the board. You want the distance you move your mouse to be consistent every time you need to perform a flick or a track. I use a lot of standard keybinds. The ones I will highlight are scroll wheel down for jump, which I use for bunny hopping and wall bouncing. It makes those movement techniques a lot easier. Hold the crouch, I also believe is superior as you have less inputs to accomplish the same action. I have my inventory on tab and my map on left alt, basically just so I can reach it quickly when I'm doing things in game. Toggle ADS, of course, this is personal preference, but I don't really see a need to use hold ADS unless you grew up using that. Uh, melee on C, separate equip weapon binds, which are really important when you're going from holding nothing or holding an heirloom, for example, to holding a specific weapon instead of having to cycle through two weapons, which is extra time between the time you pull your weapon out and the time you can shoot it. And finally, all my heals are bound to separate keys i think this is actually a better way to do it than using the heel wheel a lot of people will just disagree a lot of people use the heel wheel but i think having a separate button to do your battery a separate button to do your med kit can save you just a little bit of time once you get used to using them so test this out and see what you think i also have mouse buttons for my grenade and for my tactical now controller settings i don't really play controller anymore but when i did i liked 5-4 linear tap to interact because it's faster Hold crouch for the same reasons and smaller no dead zones if possible. In my opinion, dead zones just limit the amount of control you already don't really have on controller. My advice is experiment with different settings and response curves for a day or two at a time until you find settings that work for you. Also, turn your menu cursor speed up as high as you can handle. You want to be able to armor swap quickly, but also loot efficiently. For video settings, I run native resolution, 169, 1920x1080p native, full screen. I've tried different reses like stretch res, which is uh, 1610 or 1680 by 1050. There's different variations of these and different settings that people use. Now, changing these settings aren't going to magically make you a better player. If you're running on a lower end PC, consider trying stretch res. It's less pixels for your computer to have to render, for your graphics card to have to render, so you might see an increase in frame rate. However, for most people, just leave it at native and focus on the things that you can improve, like your recoil control. Brightness is personal preference. Field of view is also personal preference. Most players that are good at this game play between 90 and 110 FOV. Anywhere between those values is ideal for a game like Apex. I wouldn't recommend going any lower because you're just hurting yourself. You're 
tunnel vision and unable to see things that are around you. On the different side of the coin, setting it too high could cause motion sickness in some people. So you want to play with the setting. I use 104 right now. I've used 110, I've used 100, I've used 90. Again, this isn't a setting that's going to make or break your gameplay. Experiment with it, find something that's comfortable for you. One thing I will recommend changing here is Sprint View Shake. Uh, I keep that on minimal. It's not a huge, huge difference, but it definitely improves visibility and the overall smoothness of your gameplay. Advanced video settings are all low and off. This game doesn't look that much different with these settings down, and your frame rate will improve a lot by doing this. Texture streaming budget just makes skins and graphics clearer. Run this on lower medium. There's really no reason to crank it up very high. NVIDIA Reflex, as I mentioned earlier, is going to decrease the input lag between your peripherals, your mouse and keyboard, and your game. Experiment with this, but I run enabled plus boost. And also keep VSync off. If you use VSync, don't use VSync. Um, VSync can cause input lag, even though it decreases screen tear rating, causes input lag. And input lag is obviously very bad when you need Twitch reactions to kill people in your shooter game. And that's it everyone. I hope these settings and tips helped you. I tried to make this video as informative and efficient as possible, so if you enjoyed or learned anything from it, please drop a like and comment. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and increases the chance that this video gets recommended to other people that might benefit from it. If you want to see more Apex Legends content centered around good vibes and becoming a better player, consider hitting that subscribe button. We are inching closer to 2k subs every single day. Right now, almost 97% of the viewers watching my channel are unsubscribed. And now I'm super happy to be reaching so many new people, but I would love to see somebody else stick around and see what I have have in store. Finally, if you want to catch me live to ask questions, watch some Apex gameplay, or just chill and have a good time, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Link is in the description. As always, guys, I hope you all enjoyed. It's been Hybrid, and I'll see you all in the next video. Later.